I smell a setup. This feels like a setup. <laughs> oh, is this the kid who followed, uh, followed the first guy into an alley? There we go. <laughs> yeah. I feel like everyone's gotten there at some point. Everyone's been there, probably. This is the backstory on the ending of last episode. It's an instant classic. <laughs> what is funny about this scene? Oh, it's it's hooligans. <laughs> classic movie theater hooligans. <laughs> Admittedly, <laughs> I mean, if I had a button to kill people with talking movie theaters. I don't know, man. I got into it once with a guy who's making a lot of noise in a movie, and normally I. Like, I wouldn't care. If you're from New York, you just know that certain movies are going to encourage fan participation, let's call it. It's just part of the movie theater experience. There's going to be a guy who cracks a joke at the perfect time. And if it's like a Hollywood movie, specifically Marvel movies, I feel like this is a, a big thing at. It's part of the experience and it actually can be additive. But the movie I had the incident at was in China and it was a silent place, a quiet place. It's literally about quiet. <laughs> like, it's part of the whole thing we kind of got into it and it worked he was quiet but he was sitting behind me and i was just expecting him to like kick me in the back of my head the whole movie so i couldn't enjoy it and also i, I always feel bad after a conflict even if i win yeah time and place i guess you don't make noise during human earthworm 3. oh and these are the same people beating the crap out of him subasa just you know seems like a really trustworthy reliable person Focus. Coupons can wait. I really read right through that. Right to analyzing the social situation. Say it. You're already getting your ass kicked. <gasps> You're as ugly on the inside as you are on the outside. Oh, this... This analytical skill, though. I mean, probably wasn't lying. <laughs> and then they just immediately confirm this. And then he just you know, manifests there, as one does. You're making a lot of noise. Even curses want to watch movies. Do that so so casually, so effortlessly. I wonder if he feels like in some way he spawned this being. He wished for it and it arrived. I want this power. Join you. Not judge you, join you. In a way, because he symbolizes just total ineffectualness. Oh, they took pictures. Let's make sure the audience does not feel bad about their deaths at all. They ended up being important in the sense that they're life-defining. Yeah, here we go. And that's how you <laughs> get a new recruit to the League of Cursed Villains. As far as like hateable public events go, the movie theater one was a solid choice. But there's still a lurking danger of Subasa <laughs> just roaming the streets, manipulating men with her offensive capabilities. It's a loose end that I'm sure the show will have to wrap up at some point in order to be narratively coherent. There's a linking thread between these episodes. The biggest curse is attraction. Attraction is a magic. It makes you do all sorts of ridiculous things that you wouldn't think you would do. It's a gravity. Can it be used for good though, I wonder? Episode 9, Small Fry and Reverse Retribution. What a title. No boredom this time. Huh. They gotta have some connections, right? In government. I can see them having a lot of power just through fear, and also being the antidote to fear. And this is training. He's very much T on the TF MBTI spectrum. <laughs> so unnecessary as a retort, but okay. Very exacting. T people can be tough. They're just not going to give you what you want, unless you want a thought. Well, if he's good enough for Gojo, he's good enough for me. Fellow alumni? Okay. Mediocrity is just the norm. <laughs> yeah, it's just, that's just the world. I'm clicking with this guy already. <laughs> it's just the way he processes things, it's not bad. 
I like his honesty at least. He just says what he thinks. I'm sure there's a lot more to this guy. It's also fair to be weak at this point, like having just started. Let's get that protagonist DNA rising to every challenge. Flashback to Deku dropping his whole life because someone says they don't believe in heroes. Everyone must like me, or can you even call yourself a hero? I also feel like he can learn a lot from this guy. He's got his own unique take. Oh, what the hell was that? That was a Resident Evil 2 liquor popping out of nowhere. I guess this one's a school curse. Yeah, I knew it. I feel like everything's gonna change when he starts, starts fighting. What does make you an adult? <laughs> that's adulthood. Minor disappointments in daily life. Fair enough. There's a lot of ways to define adulthood, and that's one of them. <laughs> a thousand tiny paper cuts. I think one measure of adulthood that's more satisfying to me is how much the locus of responsibility and personal control is on oneself rather than one's environment. In action, but I think more importantly in perspective. You know, sort of the realization that it's kind of just you in a key sense or in a way that really matters. People in society are going to be support, but you know, when you sort of become the, the main character of your narrative and kind of wrestle that that control back from the world, because that's not how most people start. Most people start just by necessity, resting on the rails that have been laid out before them long enough to sort of get one's bearings and then find out a sense of self. And I think that comes with all sorts of things we typically associate with adulthood, like choosing to become and becoming competent, not blaming others, being emotionally autonomous in a sense and resilient in that way, putting things out in the world that you want to exist, being active rather than reactive, that kind of thing. <laughs> like analysis, matching his personality, divide and conquer, body style. His weapon is interesting. He's a little busy. <laughs> He's trying to like have a lesson. Learn while like struggling for his life. Oh, it's like Reagan telling his hand in rock, paper, scissor. Which, I mean, got me. There's something night eye about this character. Uh, that was amazing. With one slash, all it wanted was detergent. And the camera blood splatter effect. What happens when he unwraps it, I wonder? This is picking the timing. Timing and accuracy. Very precise. He seems like a precise man. He's got precise attacks. There you go, show us what you've been doing with your month. Did I miss this scene? Nice. Virgin Fist. It is really cool. Emphasis on physical strength from Yuji. He's human. He's wearing a watch. Something's changing. Something's different. They're humans. Oh, interesting. This is new. Transference of power. All for one? We might get some no moves a little bit later. Yeah, this opens up a lot of crazy doors. That's sort of nice, letting him off the hook like that. But it's gotta be rough. Yeah, that's his thing, sort of. It's kind of test. This is real. This is a real thing. It's not just in the show. You take enough pain from enough people, it creates an idea that has a life of its own. Very directly. There's nothing metaphysical about it. It's just if enough people believe a certain thing, that idea tends to grow. There's a tipping point where it seizes, let's say, a culture or a society or a group or whatever it is, to the point where that becomes so ubiquitous that it seems like truth. It seems natural. It becomes a set of underlying values from which action stems. It's kind of crazy to think about, too, because ideas sort of have their own survival of the fittest thing. They have their own natural evolution taking place, not unlike animal life where ideas that are the most persuasive end up dominating and taking power, which is a dangerous thing because not all ideas that are persuasive are good. There's a tendency or leaning to go towards things that make you feel better 
but a lot of times what's right is what's difficult. I was just talking to a friend of mine about this, about how I feel like there's sort of a weird weirdness in Western media these days. Something that I think Attack on Titan actually kind of parodied or commented on, but a lot of people got stuck on that aspect of it without realizing that Attack on Titan transcended it. And that is the idea that life is just sort of cruel and there's no way to win by being good. There is no transcending it. You just become part of a system, a system of cruelty. There's this glorification of struggle, which I kind of get, you know, I get why that's appealing and I get why it's so pervasive and why it catches hold because it's hard to get out of struggling because there is indeed a lot of cruelty and chaos. It's way more palatable to take the idea that, well, you never could win in the first place, that the game is stacked against you because of evil, and you are good because you are not part of that evil, and your worth is found in inflicting the same evil upon the evil class. There is no real rising above it. It sort of ends at, I recognize, the unfairness and terribleness of the world, and one through that terribleness. I see it in discussions, for example, like an Attack on Titan, where people are kind of out for blood because they don't see a way up. They don't see a way out. The only path forward is like brutal fighting or destruction, you know, destruction of your enemies. I see people wishing actively for the deaths of people who don't agree with them. I see more and more this, this reasoning of anything is justified if you're on the right side. That's a curse in my opinion. That's a real life curse. That's something that, that doesn't have physical space, but is real. It's a phantom that pervades a certain time period or in a certain in a certain place and it indeed comes from energy leaked from the pain of humans you know you ask yourself what is real and to me i mean there's varying ways you can define it and there are varying levels of focus and different kinds of reality like physical reality but if something's affecting the world it's real <laughs> much worse toilet bound hanako that's a legend right there this guy likes having an audience, but he's giving this kid kindness, which he doesn't seem to experience a lot of. I feel like there's something more human about Mahito. Yeah, there you go. That's why. That makes him really interesting as a symbol. So what does he do with that? The evil in people's hearts, huh? Look at this closet badass over here. This is the link, Junpei. He's kind of freaked out, but also titillated. You don't need anyone else. He's a man. He's a beast in disguise. Nah, he's going to win him over, though. He's just the kind of kid you go to like. He's never going back to school again. He's found the button. The button you can push to make your enemies go away. I'm surprised he even has clothes on. Why bother? Wow, that was really close following. That was really close tailing. I see you brought E.T. What? Damn, these episodes are getting shorter and shorter. They're starting to actually be a running plot. We got a little bit of an arc going on here with this kid. Juju's roll! <laughs> That's an odd one. Gojo just stalking him. That's cute. <laughs> wow. That was amazing. Short but sweet. Was that the important thing you had to tell him? Dick? Admittedly, he's someone who just sort of invites you to prank him or mess with him just because of how serious he is. I know he's going to be awesome though. I can relate. I'm not to his extreme, but you know, I'm someone who likes to communicate and gets a lot of utility from talking about things as I see them. And the result ends up being that I can step on people's toes. But for me, there's nothing wrong with the truth. I mean, tact is important. I never intentionally do something to offend someone. So I can bite my tongue, but I, I don't like saying things I don't think or don't believe. If put in that situation, I'll just say what I think and try to say it nicely, but it doesn't always work out. And I tend to get frustrated. Oh, that's not the right word. It's just not as fulfilling when I'm trying to approach a problem and I'm met with just emotion. There are people who focus a lot on feelings and how I should feel. But for me, I want to get more to like the meat of the issue and talk about it. And so I imagine that for people who are not like me, my approach feels exactly the same. It feels frustrating because what they're looking for is more of like a warm touch. It's just different communication styles. Time and a place. He does remind me of Night Eye from My Hero Academia. And I remember I found Night Eye not the most endearing at first, but of course we're to love him over time. I suspect it's going to be a similar thing for this character, assuming he gets screen time in season one. One thing I've learned from these shows is at the end of the day, capability and reliability, trustworthiness, tends to go a lot farther in terms of how you feel about someone than, you know, the way they talk to people or just their base, you know, base personalities, which I think is pretty revealing and also creates sort of a guideline for action. You know, you want to be successful and liked, you got to like provide something, you know, provide something great for people. They'll love your, even your flaws. You know, they'll love even the ways that you're sort of rough around the edges. You show up for people 
people in a big way when they need it, they'll find your quirks charming. <laughs> if you're extra critical but provide no solution, nothing, you know, no insight or whatever, that's sort of tough. That's one of the toughest ends of the spectrum to be on. Also in this episode, I'm really excited now. I'm, I'm getting more and more excited for this villain. His outlook is interesting and the concept of curses got a little bit more interesting with his manifestation of being the hatred of humans because I do, as I said, feel like there is a real life counterpart for this. This is not the supernatural. This is something that, ex that has a certain level of reality. It, it exists, even if it's not touchable. So what does the a villain who represents the hatred of humanity do? What is his plan of action? I'm curious.